Hey guys, so it is October. October is a busy, busy month in terms of spinning and weaving in the fiber arts. And so today I wanna to share with you a little bit of what's going on in terms of Socktober, in terms of spin together, in terms of spinning and weaving week, and so many things. Let's get started. Hi there, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing. I like to talk about the fiber arts. And today I have lots and lots of things to tell you guys about in terms of spinning things. I have my e-spinner here. I have my Saxony wheel here. I have some yarn things, some fiber things, some lots of things to share with you all. So maybe the first thing I should let you know is that this week in October, the very first week of October, is designated every year as Spinning and Weaving Week in the States. We're here in Canada, but in the States. Um, there is an organization called Hand Weavers Guild of America, HGA, and so there is a lot of conversation about spinning and weaving and trying to encourage new people to get started in these crafts. There's a lot of um, sales going on, lots of things going on in the fiber arts world. And as part of that, I was really lucky I got a chance to speak with Deb Gersh at Shacked Spindle Company. So we had a conversation on Zoom earlier last week in preparation for this week. So that is available on the Shacked YouTube channel. So if you want to check that out, we were talking about spinning and making time for spinning and all sorts of things like that. And so that is there. Part of this week as well, um, Spin Together also happens. Spin Together is kind of like a continuation of what used to be Spinzilla, which is um, a spinning event, it's a competition, it's a team-based event, but it's just encouraging more people to participate in spinning during this week. So that is part of the reason why I have my spinning wheels out here. I've been doing a lot of spinning every evening on my e-spinner. I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So Spin Together has been happening. And then the other big thing about October is that we at Sweet Georgia have been calling it Socktober for the past couple of years, Socktober. <laughs> and uh, so we have a number of things that have happened for Socktober. The first being that Tabitha released a new course on the School of Sweet Georgia, and it is called Custom Top down sock knitting. The basic idea is that Tabitha is gonna lead you through all the steps that you need in order to learn to knit your first pair of socks. And these socks could be made from literally any yarn that you have available. So if you have fingering weight, you could do that. If you have worsted weight, you could do that. Her idea, because she is so big on gauge and knitting gauge, getting gauge. So one of the very first things that she leads you through is knitting a gauge swatch and figuring out what your gauge is from the swatch and then using that number to then fill out your pattern. And so that will determine how many stitches you cast on, how many stitches in the leg, all of these kinds of things. So she leads you through that entire process of getting to your first pair of socks. And so I've seen already in the School of Sweet Georgia community forums, I've already seen people posting photos of their finished socks. It's amazing. It's great. So if you have never knit a pair of socks before and you're interested in knitting a pair of socks, that is now available. This kind of leads into another thing that has been available on our school for a while now, but basically uh, we have a class also called Spin to Knit Socks. And so that course is done by Rachel Smith and basically she teaches you how to spin yarn in various different ways in order to make yarns that are appropriate for knitting socks. And so she talks about, you know, two ply and three ply and different kinds of ply, opposing plies, you know, usually when you spin, you spin all your singles in one direction and then you ply them all in the other direction. And so Rachel goes into a bunch of um, alternative kinds of plying where uh, you might not necessarily spin them all in the same direction or you might ply in the same direction that you uh, also spun and so that adds a different kind of um, structure to the yarn. Sometimes it can make it more springy, more bouncy, more firm, more hard wearing. Lots and lots of things that you can do when you're making your own sock yarn from scratch. So that is available. Now part of that has inspired me to eventually, <laughs> between Tabitha and Rachel, they both kind of inspired me to knit a pair of socks. So I have one sock here so far, one hand spun sock. 
you can see I knit these from the toe up this time, partly because I wanted to like use up all of the yarn that I have. So I'm starting on the second sock right now. And so you can see I'm starting with just the toe. I do a figure eight cast on, and then I knit in and around in, in a circle. Uh, and then, um, get to the right number of leg stitches and all that kind of stuff. So this is actually the third hand spun sock that I've knit this year because the other ones didn't fit. <laughs> so I unraveled them and then I restarted. And so one of the things that Tabitha let me know was that I was measuring my foot in the wrong place. And so therefore I had the wrong number of stitches, all these kinds of things. So in any case, this sock fits. And so I'm trying to knit the second sock the same way. Yeah. This one happens to be BFL and Silk Blend. I can't remember what the colorway is. I think it's just, is all left over from my stash. So this is from a long time ago. So that is there. Now, before we get into talking about actually spinning and stuff like that, I wanted to share with you two other things that are happening in terms of Socktober. And so for Socktober at Sweet Georgia, we have a sale going on and it is going to go until October the 13th. And so you can use the code SOCKTOBER30 and that gets you 30% off any of our fingering weight sock yarn bases. So that would be Cash Lux Fine, Cash Lux Spark, Bulletproof Sock. Those ones are all available right now for 30% off um, with that coupon code SOCKTOBER30. And that goes until October 13th. And uh, there's that. And there's something else that we're doing and we're doing a big Socktober giveaway. So our Socktober giveaway, we are gonna have open until October 15th. You can go and check out the link in the description below. I'll post a link and all that kind of stuff. And then you can go to that link and then enter your info in order to be entered in the giveaway. The giveaway prize is going to include a bunch of things. One of them is the Breezy Sock Kit, which is basically a skein of yarn and the pattern for the Breezy Socks. The sock pattern is designed by Tabitha. And again, it is a really, really lovely sort of a delicately lacy sock pattern. And uh, yeah, so you can work that up with one of the skeins of bulletproof socks. So there's that part of the giveaway. The other thing that we're giving away is a brand new thing that we're making and it is a double sock blank. So in the past, I have shown you many, many times sock blanks. It's basically a skein of undyed yarn that has been knitted into a piece of cloth and then we dye it and then you can use that into you know, you can make it into a gradient shawl, you can knit it, you can weave it, you can do whatever you want with it, but that's like a single sock blank. So it's just one thread. We are now making this thing, which is a double sock blank, which is basically the same amount of yardage, but it's cut in half. And then two ends, two strands are held together and knit together at the same time. And so then we dye this and then comes a beautiful color. And then when you unravel it, you are unraveling two strands at the same time. Two ends will come off of this piece of cloth. And then that means that you can take those two ends and knit each one up into a separate pair, a separate sock. So then you'll have a matching pair of socks. So that's always been the challenge before. We've made these sock blanks and they're just one continuous thread, which means that if you're gonna knit socks from them, you will have two fraternal socks. But in this case, with the double sock blank, you'll have matching socks. So that's really fun. <laughs> so the new colorway that we have for this, it's, it's a brand new colorway and I'm calling it Lighthouse. And I love this colorway because, I mean, it's all sort of my, it's, it's kind of like in the wheelhouse of my favorite colors. I do a lot of things with that, you know, a sort of like a fuchsia magenta with a purple, with a deep navy kind of feel to it. But then also with this shot of like flamey red, orangey kind of thing. It's not overwhelmingly orange at all, but it's just got this little bit of a shot of this color that kind of enlightens. It just kind of brightens the whole thing and it just makes it feel kind of like a blaze in the night sky kind of a feeling. So I wanted that and we're calling it lighthouse, you know, just kind of like a, a place to head towards, a light, a light at the end of the tunnel, if you might follow me on that sort of path. So that's kind of where my head's at a little bit. And that's what I was thinking about with this particular colorway. I really love this colorway. It's gonna go into a bunch of other things that we're making as well. 
And the last part of the giveaway, because we're still talking about this October giveaway, the last part of the giveaway is going to be a three month subscription to the School of Sweet Georgia. So if you have not yet had a chance to try out the school and see what we're doing in there, see what content we're creating, how we're teaching the fiber arts, then you can join us for that three month stint if you win the giveaway. So again, the links are going to be down below. You can sign up and participate in that giveaway. Let your friends know all about the giveaway. We are very, very excited to share all this stuff with you. Okay, so let's talk about spinning and what I'm spinning right now because right now is all still spin together. We had the spin together uh, meetup on Zoom this morning. That was very, very very nice to see people we haven't like some of the people who were on the call are people that we have spun with for years at spinzilla we've always been on a team together we see each other in the studio at this time of the year we get together you know for one or two evenings during this entire time and we spin together it's really lovely i miss seeing everybody's faces and so seeing everybody on zoom this morning was really really nice it's not the same but it's it's better than nothing so I have been spinning for Spin Together. I've been spinning pretty much every evening on this e-spinner, this Ashford e-spinner. Um, I have talked about it before. You can see this here in my nice Ikea cart. Yeah, so you can see the bobbin is actually pretty full. This is because it is basically one and a half braids of fiber. It's Polworth and silk fiber. This is a custom colorway that we made for Schacht Spindle Company. So you can see this is all of the fiber that has been prepped for that. Oops. So it's basically so far more than one and a half braids on the bobbin right now. And I'm still spinning this. I'm spinning the two braids as a fractal two ply. And so the idea is um, I break up the, the braid into half, like a half, just crosswise, just break it in half. One half, I spin it straight to the bobbin. The other half, I strip it into these sort of fingering width strips and then each one of these strips goes on one after the other onto the bobbin and so once this bobbin is full with the two braids I'm going to wind it off onto my storage bobbins so I keep my storage bobbins down here so I'm going to wind these off onto four separate storage bobbins and then the two halves are gonna get plied back together. So one bobbin will be just the one half that's continuously spun. The other bobbin is going to be the half that has like multiple strips spun to it. And so those two are gonna be plied together and I'm gonna make two separate skeins of yarn. Now these two separate skeins of yarn are going to basically be pretty much identical. I mean, in terms of identical technique, I'm trying to spin to the same weight with each one of these uh, these fibers. So I'm spinning to about 40 wraps per inch is the goal here. Eventually when it becomes a two ply uh, with my sort of ply back tests, I've sort of got it to about fingering weight, a little bit less than fingering weight. And so the goal is that with these two skeins of yarn, one of them is going to become hand spun warp for a scarf and the other one will become hand spun weft for a scarf. So I wanna see what the difference is in how these colors appear in the hand woven cloth. So one is gonna be predominantly sort of, you know, the stripes, the colors blending in the warp, and then the other one will have sort of a horizontal effect. So that's what I'm trying to experiment with. Both of them are gonna have um, the same yarn that they'll combine with. So I think I'm gonna be using something like merino silk lace as the warp and weft in these two scarves. So basically this Polworth silk is gonna blend with a merino silk lace. It's gonna become a scarf, two scarves. <sighs> gonna see how that all works up. Right now I'm just trying to decide what color I should use for that scarf. I mean, it's probably gonna make more of a difference once I finally finished spinning it and seeing what the skeins look like. But you know, there's like a little bit of this rosy red color here, rosy, rosy, rusty color. There's a lot of greens, blues, this limey sort of mossy green. It's really, really lovely. And I, I really enjoy that Polworth and silk blend. It just feels really nice. It spins really nice. So that has been going on. Now I just want to spin for a little bit because somebody was asking me in the comments about how close do you spin to the e-spinner? And I can tell you that when I am spinning in the evening, I set up my 
e-spinner like so. I kind of set it up where I can see the bobbin. So I can see, you know, how it's loading up and all of this kind of stuff. Um, I know that normally when you sit at a spinning wheel, you sit this way facing the orifice. And then in order to see what is on the bobbin, you kind of have to go like this, right? So I don't, I, I just set up my e-spinner this way and I can see everything to do with the bobbin. And this is basically how I have been spinning this entire bobbin. It's basically kind of this short backward long draw. Because I've mentioned before that my problem is definitely um, doing that sort of short forward worsted draw and squeezing the life out of the fiber. So I've been trying to practice this backward long draw sort of technique to make sure that I handle the fiber as minimally as possible. I'm not smoothing it, I'm not putting too much twist in it. I'm just very gently adding some twist to it. And you can see like I am not sitting anywhere close to the orifice at all. And so with this method, I feel like it can be very ergonomic. You can sit very comfortably in a chair, you can sit however you like in order so that your back is supported, um, there's no big arm movements or anything like that. I'm just spinning right in front of my lap and that way I'm able to look at my fiber very clearly. And again, it's just managing sort of the take up of the uh, e-spinner, making sure that there's the right amount of tension on there so that it kind of tugs in at the speed that you need it to. And turning it up to the right speed so that way you're getting as much twist as you need uh, as quickly as you need it. So hopefully you can hear that it's actually very quiet too. The e-spinner is super quiet. And one thing about the tension is that as the bobbin begins to fill up more and more and more, it does become heavier. And so as it becomes heavier, it obviously needs a little bit more tension to hold it. That brake band tension has to be a little bit higher to hold it in place when you need it to. So that is that. So mostly in the evenings, I sit downstairs with this cart and with the e-spinner it sits next to the couch and it kind of just lives there and so I've been doing that every night it's been very accessible just because it's just right there so that has been great now the thing that I sometimes mention is that this wheel is lovely but it is far less accessible for me right now because I keep it in the attic because <laughs> the problem is is that I think it's too precious and so I don't put it out in the living room. I'm afraid it'll get dinged, I'm afraid it'll get damaged, and so I keep it sort of in hiding in the attic here, which means that I very rarely get to come up here and just sit here for hours on end by myself spinning on this beautiful wheel. This is um, a Lendrum Saxony that I got. It, it's with the right hand flyer because this is how I spin. I spin with my fiber hand as my left hand and my spinning hand, my drafting hand is my right hand. And so you can see So you can see I have set this up basically to be uh, in a similar way with the e-spinner where I'm sitting kind of like I can see 
the full extent of the bobbin as I'm working on it. And I'm working across my body. I'm not twisting, my body is not twisted in any way. And it's because of this right hand flyer. When you have, like I have a shacked match lesson, so that just sits right in front of you and you can spin like this and that's perfectly fine because everything is right in front of you, in front of your body. But sometimes if you're sitting at a wheel where say this wheel happened to be a left hand flyer, I would be twisting my body to sit this way in order to draft. So with this right hand flyer, it just, it works for me. It might not work for everybody this, but this works for me. So I am right now spinning this fiber also a super lovely fiber. This is a fiber that is no longer available. It is actually by another dyer. Um, it's by Pigeon Roof Knits. She doesn't dye yarn or fiber anymore. And right now she is um, dyeing cellulose cloth right now. She is dyeing. She has come back to dyeing, but she's dyeing um, she's dying cellulose. So like cotton and those kinds of uh, fabrics. But this is fiber that I bought from her many, many years ago. Um, the color I'm spinning right now is called Fairy Tale. And there's another color that I absolutely love. It's this one here. So pretty. And this one is called Intensity. And they are Polworth Mohair and Silk Blend. Um, this blend is not available anymore. I can't find it anymore. We had it at one point in time at Sweet Georgia and we dyed it one time and then we used up that entire amount and we cannot get any more. Yeah, that's very sad. So I have been saving this fiber in my fiber stash for such a long time and it was only, you know, last week when I was talking with Katrina Stewart and with Leah, we we're talking about what we're going to spin for spin together and I was saying, you know, I have all this fiber and it's so pretty and I'm saving it, but I don't really know what I'm saving it for. Like why bother saving something that's so beautiful? I mean, I know that I can't get any more of this. I know that Chris is not dying anymore. And I know, but you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy it now. I wanna enjoy it and, and not sort of just save it and look at it for another year and not touch it or do anything with it. And so what I have been thinking is this this uh, this fiber, because of the mohair content in it, it doesn't make it wiry, but it makes it a little bit more firm. It feels like it wants to stay lengthwise. And so I feel like this yarn would be really, really lovely if it was woven up into a scarf. So if it was made into a warp for a scarf. I love these sort of like earthy, autumny, but vibrant colors and so I'm hoping that I can put these together with some other commercial yarns that I have for weft and make it into this nice melded blended autumn leaves kind of scarf look. So that is what I'm working on here. This wheel is lovely. I absolutely love it. I love spinning on it but in the past couple of years not having had very much time to spin on it I basically would just keep this wheel upstairs in the attic and then every time I needed like five minutes of sanity time, <laughs> I would come and sit and spin on it for five minutes, three minutes, six minutes, whatever. And so for the past couple of years, I've never changed the bobbin. The bobbin has just been what's been on here. And every time I come to sit on it, I add five minutes worth of yarn. And so finally this morning, I wound it off onto these two little bobbins. So all of those singles ended up on these two little bobbins with a just just wound them off very quickly um and i don't know if i'm ever going to ply with them but you know with all these singles they're just <laughs> every few yards is a different fiber it's a different color it's all been mixed together but i might use it as weft like i'm not gonna even gonna ply it i'll just use it as singles <coughs> weft in some kind of a scarf <coughs> project or something i think that that could be really neat to use randomly spun yarn for that.
Okay, so I think that that is about it for this week. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for being here to listen to me talk about spinning and weaving and all these kinds of things. Please do join the giveaway. A reminder that the link is down in the description below. We also have show notes. <laughs> We also have show notes uh, if you want details about any of the things that I talked about today. So there's just a couple more things I wanted to mention before I go today, and that is that tomorrow, Saturday, October 10th, at 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, there is going to be a YouTube live stream that's going to be happening uh, to celebrate the Operation Sock Drawer book that is going to be coming out by the Knitmore Girls. And so it is going to be a live stream together with some of the designers that contributed designs to this book. And so it's called Operation Sock Drawer. And so there's a whole bunch of sock patterns. I contributed a sock pattern. Uh, I have to find where I put them. I'll show them to you next time. I, I have the socks, they're somewhere in this attic here. But um, basically there was a whole bunch of designers who contributed sock patterns and they've all gone into this book that is going to be released on October the 20th. And so I'll share more about the book when I, when I see it. <laughs> But if you want, you can come and join us for a virtual knit-in live stream on Saturday, October the 10th, 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Also, uh, this week I spoke with Deb and Janine at the Skein Sisters in Australia. And so they are participating in Sydney Craft Week, which is coming up. And um, we had a conversation about color and yarn and choosing colors and blending colors and all sorts of things like that. And so you can find that also. I'll leave a link below to where those conversations have been happening. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about spinning and yarn and color and all sorts of things like that today. Tell me, are you knitting anything for October? Are you knitting socks? Are you spinning yarn for socks? Are you spinning for spin together? Are you spinning yarn for anything else, I would love to hear about what you are making this busy, busy October. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. And I come here every Friday to talk about something to do with the fiber arts. In probably a week or so, I'll give you the part two of what's happening with that Mira loom at the studio. It is set up, it is all warped, it's ready to go, and I'm gonna weave on it a little bit before I tell you more about it. That's it for today. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now. There's a red line. What's the red line? It yeah, there's a red line means that we're recording. Goodbye. Bye bye.